uh, we had a young woman who was part of the 200 member choir. And she had taken classes in the Bible school with, you're talking 150 to 200 people in a class. That young woman went out one night and put a gun to her head and killed herself. Mm. And I thought in a church of over 10,000 people, how in the world did nobody know her? And how did she not know anybody? There are people who are waking up and saying, this is for real, uh, the, that, that my faith is precious to me. And I need to find others on my same spiritual page. They're not content with just doing church anymore. They are very much aware that Matthew 25 talks about when Jesus returns, he says to those who fed me, clothed me, watered me, took me in, visited me, those are the ones who will inherit the kingdom. And that's the body of Christ that he's looking for. It's a very practical body of Christ. He, he had told me in another visitation, you're going to see an underground economy develop in my body. And he said, you're going to hear of buying and selling, trading and bartering, giving and receiving. There is there is coming a time where the, the body of Christ is so connected to one another. He said, I want you to start a house church and a house church network. And I want you to structure it in such a way to facilitate the development of house churches around the world. What we're seeing is people who are hearing stories of heaven, we can almost taste it because it seems so real and seems so near. I think saved and unsaved alike can tell something is going on, mm -hmm. something is about to change. And there, there are people in the body of Christ coming alive and saying, I want to be, I don't care about church membership, I want to be with people on my same spiritual page who have the same spiritual priorities of caring for one another, of being that safety net for people. It's all related to this understanding that we're already in eternity that the people mm -hmm. I sit across from in the living rooms of our house churches today, I'm going to know 500 years from now. Yeah. You and I still gonna be friends, still gonna know each other 500 years from now. But there's mm -hmm. an intimacy in heaven that we didn't even talk about. There's an intimacy in heaven that goes far beyond anything on earth, far beyond sure. anything sexual, far by, beyond anything of the soul. The intimacy there because of the safety factor that you can bear your heart yeah. to anyone in heaven and they will not abuse that, misuse that, think ill of you. There's an intimacy that comes with knowing one another so deeply, so thoroughly, that we get a taste of it in a, in a godly marriage and perhaps a godly friendship between best friends as well. But in heaven, it is just to the nth degree in power even more because there is no devil, there is no flesh. And when all those are gone and you can just open up and you can be 100% yourself and it's all in Christ and all godly, it's an amazing thing, the intimacy in heaven. And, and we, we, we strive for that here on earth. We can perceive the grace in one another and walk in love and be at peace with one another. Even if personality wise, we might clash. When we see what Jesus is doing in your life, we can agree on that. Uh, my book, Return of the First Church, I will send you by email the PDF of that book, just email me at cwowi at aol.com. And you can go directly to our website, cwowi.org. And you can find out how to contact us there. Once you realize that Christ is in you and everything is sacred and realize that the church is out there in every workplace and, and farm and field, and it just takes the limits off and you can love people for what God is doing in their lives. It just takes the limits off of you. You can exhibit that love and it really is it really is amazing. It, it's also very mundane, very normal because you know Jesus saying clothe me, feed me, you know, take me in, <laughs> visit me. That's very very boring. It, a, a relationship based faith will affirm your faith differently than say pews and woodwork and stained glass. Uh, affirms your faith. But uh, once you make that adjustment um, and realize that these people you're going to know for all eternity and, and they've got your back, you just can't go back. And, you know, what, what we do is, you know, how they grew in the early church. We, we rotate homes, we rotate who leads, who hosts, and we rotate who leads. So when you're rotating each week, somebody else, a different host house when they're available and take turns who leads that meeting because it's not sermon oriented. Then when you outgrow a home, you just multiply out. And you've got a core group of, of leaders that the Bible would call elders, but we don't put titles on them. The words of the New Testament, like bishop and deacon and apostle and all that, 
they those were action words back then, you know? An apostle is one who sent out, an evangelist is one who proclaims good news, a pastor is one who tends the sheep. Today, we've turned them into labels. We've turned them into nouns. Yes. And that's hurt the body of Christ. Once we realize that Christ is in us and we just are all equal, but we just have different functions, you know, your spiritual life levels out, becomes a walk of love, becomes challenging, but becomes very steady and healthy and balanced.